Hey, Cynthia. Hey, good to see you, Liz. Thanks for talking to me today because as so often I think about you when I have my weird question of the day. Yes, love it. <laughs> and I know that you definitely will have um, at least an opinion on this, if not answers. So in our work, we will often see we change the way we feel about something or someone or um, no, I guess about something or someone. And then all of a sudden it appears as though we're in a brand new timeline. I know you're doing this as well in your work where people, is that that's correct? Right, right. Absolutely. People end up in a new timeline. So you're in a new timeline and things start to look and feel differently. And in so many of the cases with us, the people in that timeline, you may have had a quarrel with them five minutes ago. And now all of a sudden they're saying and doing all the things that create this harmonious relationship. So here's the big question. What happens during a reality shift or a quantum jump or a timeline shift to the other people? Are they still the people that you know? Are they someone different? Do they have the same consciousness or different? So what's that about? Well, really, I think the deeper question is who are we really? And I think that's the key to the whole question here, because we tend to assume that we know, like, I, I think I know who I am because I have these thoughts, these feelings, this body, this, you know, clothing, this hair, whatever. We think like, that's me, my voice, my, my personage. But actually, we're so much more than that. And this is what we start noticing with this reality shifting is that just like moving through a dream world or a dreamscape, it's possible literally to experience changes in the surroundings with the people that you're with. They can really go through massive changes in their personality and to, to a remarkable degree. And it's, it can be a very good thing. This is why I like that steering question. How good can it get to be that rudder that kind of keeps everything moving the right direction? Because um, it helps pr provide us sort of a safety net. Um, but your question then, like, are these the same people? This is a question that's come up a lot over the years for me. You know, people write to me and they're noticing like, whoa, my friends are different. They don't seem the same. Um, you know, in some cases I've actually, I think the most extreme was Jerry, the dark wolf Hicks. He's part of the, he's currently the president of the International Mandela Effect Conference. And he oh. noticed, yeah, he noticed that it's like musical chairs with his friends. They all change their personalities like overnight. It's the weirdest thing. And then it does raise the question, are they the same? And who are they really? Now, if you, okay, so that's the real, when you notice the real question is who are we really? Then we are much more than our personalities, obviously. So what we're demonstrating in one moment of, you know, where these personalities switching, that is like clothing. That's not really who the person is. That would be just like, that one's always angry. This one's always sad, blah, blah, blah. But you know, and I know from the work we do, some of those changes can happen in a, in a heartbeat, in a moment, in an instant. And a person can be quite different. So we've seen that happen. You have, you've, you've talked about it with cognitive movement, with the work you and Bill McKenna do. And that's amazing. So the question, I think when you go deeper and you realize who are we really, uh, we, what I notice and what I feel, my experience is that I feel like I'm so much more than ever fits in any particular uh, personality or version of me. There's so much more to me. And I feel like I'm cycling through. It's kind of like, like each day I wake up, there's one little part of me that was like, oh good, it's my turn today. But it's all from this bigger collective and it's huge. And I feel that very strongly. I, I don't know if most people are conscious of that. But I do sense that that is what's going on when we see these shifts. So is it the same person? Yes, when you look at the collective, yes. But when, if you're only locked on to the personality, it's gonna look weird. You know, the behaviors, like they're so different. Is it the same? Sometimes they'll ask, is this my spouse? You know, like, like this is kind of concerning. Like, who is this? Well, you know, they're showing you a different facet. And if they stay in that same facet day after day after day, and it's not one that works in the relationship, then that's interesting information. Then you move from there, but, you know, or you can do other things to facilitate it. I don't know if I answered your question. To me, they're, they're the same. They're there. Yeah. But, it, but it's like, so much, we are so much bigger than we realize. 
So uh, with our work, uh, we change the, the person. So let's say that I have a problem with my uh, mother and I'm really angry with her. And every time I think about her, I think she's a jerk. She always does this or that to me, right? So you feel a certain way about that physical sensation and we change the neurological patterns. You don't feel like that anymore. Mm. And then it's, it's quite predictable. The next time you run into that person, or if I ran into my mother, she seems very different, or she might call me immediately. The immediacy of these shifts is what's so fascinating. She might call immediately and say, gosh, I'm so sorry. Would you please excuse me? I didn't realize that this or that affected you in that way. And, you know, I just won't do that anymore. And they don't. We've seen that again and again during seminar, a person will get an email or a phone call from the person they're working on. So I strongly believe we're shifting timeline. Yes. And one way that I have thought about it is that everybody is who they are through my lens specifically. When I see you, I see you from a certain perspective and I feel a certain way about you and oh I just think you're so lovely and I just enjoy talking to you and it's so much fun but somebody else might think oh that's Cynthia you know she's <laughs> she's mean to me or right so when I change myself and I and we really change very much energetically as I know people do in your work as well that now I'm projecting something different as well and I'm also not maybe bouncing off that person's uh, the, the bad thing that was a match to me in the past, if that makes any sense. So I'm thinking I'm a new person. So they are a new person in this reality, same consciousness, same being, but I can't see the other parts I could see before. So that was kind of one way that I was, that I've been reconciling that fast shift. But then I think, well, and as you know, as well, in those timeline changes, it's just not that that person's different. It's now that maybe my doorknob's on the wrong side or mm -hmm. my car's a slightly different color. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've experienced that. We do know that when we make the kind of electromagnetic hormonal changes, right. sometimes colors do look differently, but it doesn't, it doesn't account <laughs> for everything. So then I'm back to the same question in this new timeline. If I'm different, are they also different? When you say back to the same timeline, you mean you, you've gone and you've come back. No, I'm back to the same question. So okay. if I switch timelines and in the new one, I'm different. Right. Okay. Are they, are they also different? Are we different, a different version? I think maybe that's what you were saying. The same being the same higher self being right. But different aspects are available in different timelines. Well, the way, the way I notice it is that if each of us are such so much bigger than we tend to think we are, and that feels right to me, I feel like you're so much more than you can show. I think most of us feel that way. Yeah. We're only presenting a certain small smidgen of the yeah. totality of our greatness, which some people are embarrassed about. They might not feel like it's their greatness, but for whatever, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's like the full multifaceted um, fullness of you, all these qualities, all these possible adjacent realities where we do have other skills that we haven't yet explored but in some reality we have and it's right there we have access to it so we can pull that in and so when we notice okay i've done that um the, the other people are equally big so we're we're still connecting to them but it might be part of them that feels very bored with what's going on yeah. and so they might feel like a non-player character but they're not I would say nobody's a non-player character. I see some people look like they're hibernating. They look asleep. They look dormant. They look like they're not really there. They just need to be lit up. They need something to activate. Yeah, I like that. And when that happens at the right time, I'm not forcing these things, but when these things happen, then they're there. And then you'll see that there's a lot there. There's, there's nothing wasted in all of creation that I've ever seen, but I have seen you know some that look like they're snoozing or resting. And sometimes when you make that jump and you're hoping like, well, yay, ta-da, I'm here. Where's the cheering and the applause and yeah. the accolades and <laughs> like everyone looks so dormant still. What happened? You know, well, yeah. that can happen. But but the but I love what you're talking about with the change that when you feel it with with like the person who had the issues with their mother and then they feel transformed now the next time they talk to their mom and she's like a whole different person. Yeah. And 
And that makes sense to me because you can actually feel those standing wave energy patterns when they're in the, the energy cord heart to heart, for example, you can feel it. It's like, eh. like if you're intuitively helping someone to clear the pattern, you look at that and that's like, oh my gosh, there's stuff there. So yeah. that needs totally to get cleared. Yeah. Um, and so one, but, um, but then when you notice it is cleared, the pattern's different. It's like, it's like, ah, like everyone feels that sense of, they can relax, they can, they can rest. It's okay to be who they are. And there's that feeling of safety and, and it's visceral. It's like, so that standing wave pattern of tension has, yeah, yeah, yeah. has dissolved and it's, you know, thanks to the work you're doing. And that's, it's so fun to see that when that happens. Well, and yours too. So I actually have a question about the work that you do. Are you fundamentally changing the energy signature of the person? Is that the function of the timeline shift? Well, that's one thing that could happen. Often people need to access energy that because that's what tends to power up any kind of quantum jump is you know access to that infinite energy source of you know that which creates all that is. So getting to that that zero entropy point, I'm pointing like this because to me the perennial philosophy, it just all points there. Even the atheists, they can understand and appreciate zero entropy you know, like what Carlo Rovelli talks about when you've got time, when you've got transformation and change, all the rest of us are having entropy at the zero point towards zero entropy. That's the ultimate energy. I'm calling it energy. It, it gives us everything, not just energy. Everything comes from there. And so all the ways that we have to access it through all of the various techniques that we use. Yes, that's one thing that I do. But sometimes it's I'm working with alignment and just helping the person recognize levels of themselves. Sometimes I'm working with the connections with others and becoming more aware of what that feels like and, and how important it is, not just to create a reality that, that we personally enjoy, but we can share with those that we love the most. Wow. So there's, there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, I get that. There's a lot to it. We're so stuck in our ways, I think, is one of the biggest things, so many of us, that I think this is available to everyone and more and more it's happening spontaneously to us because the energies are shifting so much, but this idea that you can do it purpose, purposefully, you know, and pre relatively predictably with our work, we can relatively predict the change, not exactly specifically, but that one will happen. We do know we've recorded it. So we do know there is a jump in voltage. And we know that there's a signal, the body's sending a new signal. So I don't know if you've heard about this, but I heard Billy Carson, you know who Billy Carson is? Yes. He's a Gaia presenter. I heard Billy Carson talking about an MIT um, study. I don't know if you've heard about this. Maybe you could even find out what it is. I haven't been able to find the exact study, but he talked about being an MIT um, neuropsychology class and the study was done that said that in this six to eight foot field around the body that energy field we know that heart math has measured and i think some mit has done some as well that in a in a state of stress the body will actually emit and and what can be found in that field is cortisol not just flowing inside the body but flowing outside the body so that Theoretically, if you walk into my six to eight foot field and your, your body can easily pick up cortisol, now your fight or flight goes into, kicks into gear and you're like, wait a minute, I just sensed cortisol. I know there's a lion around here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I better be on high alert. Now you're emitting cortisol and our fields are interacting in a way that is fight or flight, everybody better run. Now you're probably likely to be reacting to me. You know, I might be the threat possibly. Mm -hmm. So like in households, if one person has a chronic high cortisol level, everybody else is always on edge. So the minute that's gone, that signals to anybody within your field, physical field, the threats over the threat assessment ends. So they immediately drop their cortisol levels too. And, of, and now we're all harmonious. So that's one thing, but that does not account for when the mother calls from 4,000 miles away immediately. Right. right. That's something different. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's an energy cord connection. That's the entanglement, the love that, you know, that, that heartfelt connection, even if there's other stuff as well as the love. Right. I haven't, I've not heard of that study that you're mentioning, but it reminds me of some of the work done with trees where trees communicate chemically, right. but I think they do it energetically too. And yeah. they will broadcast if there's some kind of a stressor and they will basically be communicating. Like we have language, we have words. They seem to chemically communicate. So they will tell the other neighboring trees, like there's a drought pattern or there's a, there's some sort of insect eating right. the leaves or whatever, you know, whatever the danger may be, they're very clear about what it is. And so it makes sense that humans would have evolved some kind of a cortisol broadcasting transmission that we're not consciously aware of until these studies are done. I love it. Right. Well, you know, so you think about it in a, like a herd of gazelles and there's a lion at the back of the herd of gazelles, but within seconds, the front gazelle is running. So you realize they're, they're probably passing this cortisol very quickly up the chain. Well, I realized as mammals and it, you know emitting cortisol this is happening if you've got one teacher at a school or one child in a classroom or one person at a at work every person you come into contact with that cortisol level that unconscious awareness there's a lion on our butts we better watch out and then people are more irritable and i loved it because it made me think about how a culture of a company happens you know, how a culture of a family happens, how everybody is kind of functioning the same. So that's one thing. However, that doesn't account for the people, you know, on the other side of the country, but it also doesn't account for, so cords and attachment, I get all that, that would make sense in families. Yes. It doesn't account for some of the other high strangeness, like we have people who, have real estate. This is a weird thing within our work. Real estate seems to be a theme. And people will say, you know, I've had this thing on the market, commercial business, or had it on the market for 10 years and nothing has happened. So then they clear how they feel about it, the frustration, the just, we change the neurological pattern. Mm -hmm. And our aim is only this, for the body to feel better. We know once you don't feel that way, you don't think that way anymore. The body does not, the mind doesn't have a reason to make up why you feel bad. Right. So you just don't feel bad, releases the stress. And then you have more of your brain and more energy for your brain to come up with new solutions. Thinking about it differently, we activate left and right hemispheres of the brain. And lots of times we'll have the, give the brain the ability to look at it with all quadrants, different perspectives. So our aim initially was, <clears throat> to have the person feel better and to have be more resourceful. Right. So, you know, originally we think, okay, well, maybe you list it somewhere else or you get a different realtor or you pull it off the market and do upgrades. Like you're not stuck anymore, but that's not what happens. 10 minutes later, a half an hour later, one day later, five offers come in. Mm -hmm. We had an author who had the exact same thing happen within a day, five offers came in for their book deal. So this requires, so this is where I see we're in a real quantum shift because this requires people that we don't even know, have never met us, have never seen our face in our life, no uh, obvious connection. Yes. <laughs> and now they're different. Now they're, they're, they've made a different decision. Things have shifted in them. In them. Yes. So how do we explain that? Like five minutes before that person was not interested in buying our building and now they are like, how? Well, this is another, kind yeah, of, how do you explain this? <laughs> well, that, that one makes sense to me because you're, you're working with freeing up that energy that you're talking about that, and you've even recorded it. You've seen that the energy yeah. release occurs during times of healing. And it's so obvious it's measurable. I love that you've been measuring it. I think that's brilliant. So Similar things are happening when you're working with an individual and they're freeing up that energy that may have been inadvertently held really tight, you know, with yeah. that space when they're trying to sell something. So um, that, that really does make a difference. And there are lots of ways to, to free that energy up. You know, there's, you know, obviously the cognitive movement approach is fantastic. Yeah, it's one. Yeah. Yeah. That's one way. Sometimes I've, I've worked a lot with the same kind of, it's funny, the property thing definitely comes up and it's so... Yeah 
perfect for this kind of quantum jumping work. Um, often when I look at properties, I'll sometimes be able to intuitively sense that there's been a some sort of problem, which I can actually see and I can see the energy, the history of it. And wow. I can do I can do like a remote walkthrough and I feel like, whoa, what happened here? Something really weird on that wall. And then they'll say, oh, we just, that was the fireplace. We walled it up. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, that's funky. But you can oh. fix all the energy, you know, of a place. And that was before the pandemic, but um, but that kind of thing is still valuable and yeah, uh, powerful stuff. So there are lots of tools and and maybe part of the person's awareness, like wow, this energy is viewable from a distance, and they're participating with me in the walkthrough and c- connecting with the elements of the property. Um, you know, tremendous instant changes can occur there too. And you're right; it just goes from a situation of stagnation, like the doldrums had hit. Nothing was happening to suddenly things just move. And it's, it's amazing and fun to see that happen. Yeah, it's so interesting because I think, okay, so maybe what I, I need an explanation for this, right? And our, and our practitioners are the one who really brought this question to my attention. And then, of course, I had to be thinking about it, which is fun. But, you know, I, I thought, okay, maybe it's that really it is. And, and maybe let me formulate this as a question for you. Is it, Cynthia, really just one aspect of us seeing it from our perspective? Is everything really us and we're experiencing it through our own lens? Remember who we are. We are that bigger self. We can see, we're like the eyes of an insect seeing, we we have the capability to see thousands of possible lives, like in any moment. We usually don't. We don't. That would be too trippy, too much to handle. So we focus on just one facet of our like our huge oversoul being embodied in our tiny little body that doesn't fit very much at one time you know but the rest of it's still there we have access to all of it with the work that you guys are doing you're actually giving people access to the fullness of who they are and all those realities and then they can find the one where it's like oh I just feel so neutral and so cool about this whole thing I've got like I've switched off all the stress there's no cortisol (laughs) And I'm just feeling all the good vibes and feeling like this is a property that is ready for it to move or whatever it is you're working on. And the energy starts flowing from that zero point. You've got full contact connection. You've accessed that level of release where all of the internal drama that may have been occurring is gone. But you're the, the who, who are you? You're that fullness. You're so much bigger. What's happening? You're connecting with that divine source energy. Pow, you know, and from there, everything and anything can happen. This is how miracles occurred. This is, I believe, all the miracles that Jesus Christ is said to have achieved because it's just access to that energy. When you have access to that energy, of course, you can, you know, turn water into wine, walk on, walk on water, you know, the whole loaves and fishes, yeah. all of that, all of that. Yes instantaneous healing back from the dead all of it yes yeah well I've never seen the back from the dead one yet I haven't seen that one that one I know that you have um you have, yes. can you share one of those have you <laughs> have you seen I mean it had someone experience yeah well for me the one I wrote about in my book reality shifts occurred in the 1980s when my I moved across the street and my roommate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Catherine yeah she had this cat named Ashes and she brought it up from San Diego we were stud- students at UC Berkeley together I'm studying physics and I forget what she was studying but she was ahead of me you know and always encouraging me and so her cat Ashes was just this beautiful beautiful gray cat with such a serene caring just a beautiful creature just, just one of those cats that everybody loved and so when I moved across the street, I was kind of bummed, like, well, the biggest problem is I won't get to see ashes. But then I was wrong because he would come across the street and visit all the time in the garden. He was always there. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. I moved across the street, but ashes is always here. And then one day I didn't see him. The next day I didn't see him. It was weird. And then I checked it with Catherine. What happened? And she said, oh, and she looked horrible. She just said, "You did. I, I need to tell you, Ashes got hit by a car and he, and he died. And I'm like, he died? And I couldn't believe it. And it, it was just, it set me reeling. And this was one of my first experiences with this, what, what now we call the Mandela effect, where Nelson Mandela is dead and right. then alive again. Okay, but it's happening in my world, in my realm, to someone I care about, my, the cat. 
you know, that was part of our household. So he felt he wasn't my cat, but he felt like family cat, you know. So I missed him terribly. And I felt that horrible feeling you have when you feel like someone left too soon. Like this isn't right. I didn't get enough time. Yeah. That was too soon. I, I, I squandered my moments with him. I was always like, hi, ashes. I, I'm busy. Boy, I wouldn't do that now. And so I had those thoughts and I didn't think anything of it. And then I don't know how much time went by, days, weeks, but suddenly one day there he was in the garden, absolutely ashes, unmistakably ashes, a little bit greasy. It's like he hadn't been washing properly, almost like he'd had some kind of, a, like he'd aged and he was creaky and I like can't be bothered to wash anymore. Mm. But it's like, I don't care. Like, oh my gosh, you're back. It's totally, I mean, he recognized me. He had the same meow, he had the same purr the same personality, except for a little bit, he looked just a bit greasier and a bit older, totally otherwise identical. And it was a blessing. You know, I just felt like this is wow. like absolutely a miracle. And I asked my husband, do you remember, you know, this? And that was one of those, I, then I got to see what we see in the Mandela effect all the time. Kind of like, what are you talking about? He was hit by a, oh yeah, oh yeah that's weird. Why would we think he was hit by a car? What? <laughs> you know, it's just that yeah. weird, that feeling of why do I remember that? It's very interesting when that happens. So it, that was an extraordinary example of, you know, just noticing someone coming back alive again. And it was like someone close to me that it was like almost a daily um, household member. So that's a pretty significant Mandela effect. Yeah, that's very significant. Uh, it's just so interesting because it does seem, and I know you've said this many times that it seems like it's happening so much faster right. now. And I'm wondering if it's really more available because of some of the changes that are happening, you know, solar flares and yes. all the kinds of things that were, that are happening. It's just so much uh, more available for things to change instantly in, in 2020, which we all know what happened then. I heard so many people who were not into the things we're talking about say to me, I really, I feel like this is not real life. Or I feel like we shifted time. They, I mean, so many people felt it physically that something massive had changed. Do you think we went through a, a big timeline change or quantum jump or quantum shift at that point um at that point possibly yeah. you know there was a big shift in all of the daily i mean you can look at our daily patterns went through a huge uh, it's like we all went into sort of this uh, meditation um program all together yeah. collectively worldwide it's like okay you're quarantined or you're just sheltering in place whatever you want to call it and that whole business of getting a meditate uh, sort of enforced meditation some people felt very resentful about it like um you know like this is not fair but if you just get if you stay in that neutral place that we know is so productive and you're just like right, well let's just go with the flow let's see where this goes um and those of us who have been meditating they know to go there yeah and, and that creates kind of that pilot wave we I, I know that collective consciousness on the planet is a thing so the hundredth monkey concept where those meditators who we know like, ah, oh, this is meditation. We can then start broadcasting, not cortisol, but we can broadcast a frequency of this is what it feels like to go within and to recognize that all this much bigger, all these facets of possible reality are all here. And so in this time frame, this is when the, the um, it's the newest generation, the TikTokers, they were noticing reality shifting and let's, yeah, reality, right. let's, let's reality shift to Hogwarts and that kind of thing. So it really caught fire. And I think it did so thanks to a lot of meditators from the millennials and previous, you know, the baby boomers that were the hippies who've been meditating and doing that inner journey work and chanting and doing the OM and the yoga totally made a huge difference. So I'm giving credit to all this, these lineage of, you know, the, the, the those who've helped set that up. And then of course, there's the perfect storm of the Schumann resonance. Yeah. Know, and, and what's going on with the solar system and, you know, all this solar energy coming through. We're in a huge pattern right now that we're, um, it's, it, this is not a question. It's not in doubt. It's a fact, you know, we're getting measurable solar flare activity and measurable changes in the Schumann resonance that have just been 
totally different than anything we've seen in previous years. And all of that, you can trace it back to about that time frame. Yeah. So the Schumann resonance is the vibration of the planet, right? It it vibrated at a very standard rate. Is it? Would you call it a vibration or something else? Yeah, you could call it that. It was, I think it was around eight hertz uh, it used to be, and it was so stable. It was boring. Um, right. It's kind of like, you could look at it like, well, why are we looking at this? It's it's not exactly eight, it's 7.9, something or other, like, yep, <laughs> nothing to see here. And, you know, there'd be an occasional flutter or something, but nothing like these high, super, super, super high vibrational activity patterns that we're seeing. And, you know, and just when we think we've seen everything, then there's yet another uh, shakeup in the Schumann resonance. So that's been something we can look at and, and then match that to what we're experiencing. And, you yeah, know, like, I think if people don't know that, that if you're, you know, it's like a little like being in an earthquake in a way, if we're used to vibrating at a, a particular rate, like, right. And all of a sudden that frequency changes massively. Our, our frequency is going to be changing along with it. Right. And if you add the solar flare activity, now here's something I'm curious about. Solar flare activity, you know, shoots all this, uh, you know, I guess it would be energy. Maybe that's wrong into our atmosphere as well it, it, is it creating more available energy different energy what is that solar flare creating actually that's a good question i i mean it's i think it's doing a lot more than meets the eye so we tend to just measure it in terms of uh, you know, where is the location of the flare? What's the magnitude of it? What direction is it? All that measurable stuff. Did it come out of a crater? Did it surprise us? We've seen that this last week. Um, you know, like that was unexpected. You know, is it aiming at the earth? Is it going to knock out all of our communications? That's a quite real and present possibility. Um, but um, there's, I think there's a lot more going on than just what meets the eye. Yeah. And to me, the sun is such a central part of our life on earth as we know it without the sun nothing would be you know, anything like it is on earth so we, we we depend so much on it and for it to be going through this kind of a teenage you know unpredictable pattern like what is it going to do <laughs> i think that's kind of cool so it's not just the fact that it's giving us these flares and the energy shifts and changes but i think that it's happening on levels that we might not even know to be looking for right now. But for those of us who meditate and go into our, trust our intuition, we can feel it. And those of us who do that are constantly noticing like what you and I talked about last time, like it's an upgrade, totally feels like that. Like when we talked about those dreams, you know, in the pandemic and feeling like, I feel like I'm in school. It's like, this is an upgrade, yeah. totally. And that's happening with the sun. So I think we're definitely feeling that. Well, we say so many weird things every day in our work that it's not even weird anymore. I know you must as well. It's not weird. It's actually relatively becoming normal and predictable, but it feels like to me that because of these changes, and maybe it's where we are in the universe, maybe it's solar flares, maybe it's Schumann, Schumann resonance. There's so much more available, you know, changes that are available very, very quickly, quantum jumps. And what I mean by that is like a leap from here to there that should have taken 10 or 15 years. And now it's, it's now right yes. now, those changes seems like it's available. Yes, it is. And I think that, that all of these energy sources that we're discussing are making it available. And, yeah. and thanks to our um, enforced meditation practice this <laughs> last couple of years, we're starting to notice like we are bigger than we thought we are. Yeah, we totally are. It's all there. And so the fullness of who each of us is, is becoming more evident and through your work and mine people start noticing like wow i can really do that and i'm seeing yeah. instant changes in the whole world and it's life-changing you know it's it's good for your health good for your mental well-being good for your relationships and sometimes it's just startling um, you know it can yeah. feel like what the heck are we dealing with i but if you've been asking how good can it get then just have faith and stay stay accepting and neutral and groove with it it'll be okay well, that's a really, really good point because timeline shifts don't only aren't only positive. They can be negative as well. And it seems to match you, whatever your vibration is, whatever your the signal that you're sending out in the moment. It, it so good, bad, or ugly, we're doing that all the time. 
but it can be really, really positive if you're focused that direction, if you're looking for it. So in my work, the way we gauge is how do you feel? So this week I have to do paperwork for to buy my brother's house. My brother passed away and we're in, in, the, in the process of that. And I hate it. I just hate it. I'd rather, no, Cynthia, listen to this. I would rather go to the gynecologist and have a root canal while being run over by the bus at the same time than have to do this paperwork. Seriously. So how do you think that's probably going to work out for me? I would not I wouldn't well. be saying those things. Yes. <laughs> not well. I'm like, wait, cancel, cancel. No, no, no. Oh and it God. hasn't. So I have to catch myself. I realize yeah. I, one, one way to look at it is, oh, my int- intuition is don't do that. Right. But the truth is, I know it matches a pattern in me that hates paperwork, hates numbers. It's so boring. The truth is, it's yesterday's news. All of that paperwork is about yesterday or months ago, not today. And I'm always thinking about what's next. (laughs) So my job is not to match that signal, but to clear it out of my system. Stop feeling that way about it is the bottom line. No, that's not a logical mind thing for me. It's not. It matches things from my past. My nervous system did a massive threat assessment and decided that was probably fatal, (laughs) right? So I had to clear, I have to clear that out to get my nervous system out of fight or flight, have it not match that, that energy anymore, have it not matched things in the past that I hated doing. So I had to have an assist. I had to call in Bill McKenna this morning to help me move it out. I couldn't do it on my own because it was so deep. But I think that's the issue. It's about what are you going to be a match to? And are you willing to accept that it's likely you, (laughs) that you can change it? You know, one big question is in this life right now, are you willing to get rid of your biggest resentment? And if you did, would that free you to literally have everything else? Right. I like to ask, I love how you ask, how do you feel? That's the one I've been asking too. And I like to also ask when I'm working with clients, um, I'm checking, I do a blind read on them before the session. I'm asking at different levels, what do they need that Mm -hmm. I can be of assistance with best today? And how do they feel? So I'm getting those two pieces of information. They're both very pivotal. What we need is often not what we think that we need. And it's not often what we are interpreting from what we're feeling. So it's very interesting um, that when we sense the, that it's okay to, to recognize like you have needs and you can look at what those are and you can maybe, maybe they can't be met instantly, but you can hold the space with yourself. I think that's the hard part when you're dealing with something that feels like this is going to kill me. And I know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. So it brings everything together. It's like a perfect storm of yeah. ugh, everything that you least like, but um but thank goodness that you've got Bill. Yeah, good you've, tools. <laughs> that you can, you've got that assistance. And because sometimes it's too much for us to pull ourselves out. Yeah. We, we do need help. That's, we are social beings and yeah. we, we do pull each other up. And that's what we're here to do. Yeah. Well, most of the time, you know, I, I can do it for myself. Most of our people can do it for themselves. But there's sometimes there's that piece that you just cannot, you can't see yourself. You can't clear up. But if you have the awareness that you're, that me, you know, you, you're, we're in resistance to that thing at a minimum, we're pushing against it. I understand that it's my nervous system pulling the alarm bells, right? Right. Right. Code red. So I know that I can, I can change that and I can feel better about it, but I can also change the outcome by doing that. Right. A million ways. One, I could think about it differently, make a different choice. Ask how good can it get? Even Ask how you, great. Yeah. <laughs> even you though you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, actually, you know what, Cynthia, you inspired me so much today. I heard you on your recent Gaia interview with uh, Regina Meredith, and you said to ask the question that you really want the answer to. Yes. So after clearing the muck out of my own system around this paperwork, I thought, okay, what do, what's the, what answer do I want? What am I looking for? And what I came on is, What is the most fun thing that could happen around this? What's the most fun that could happen out of this? Like, what would be the thing that would tickle me the most? 
Exactly. That was go. my question. And immediately it helped. I was at neutral. I got neutral, but it helped shift my state into, yeah. ooh, fun. Yeah. I never thought this could be fun, but it reminded me that it could be fun. Right. Because we've had these amazing things happen in the, our lives and the lives of others. So this could be one of those things where something really fun, really entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and so often when I make, when I put that out there, then things do come through. It's, yeah. And then fortunately, then we're in that mindset to receive it. Otherwise, for some yeah. reason, it's almost like we got blinders on to those realities. Yeah. And it's, it, unless we would think to ask that, how good can it get? Or, you know, what is the real question that I want answered here? If it's not, how good can it get? But just, yeah, keep asking the good questions. And then we, lots of fun, lots of joy, love, peace, harmony, yeah. friendship, just all the good stuff. Yeah, well, I think at the end is, uh, how can I take care of the situation without having to do that paperwork? That, that's my real question. <laughs> that, that's the real thing. I still don't really want to do it, but I'm not suffering about it anymore. So I have one last question, Cynthia, and this is a doozy. You ready? I don't okay. know. We'll give it a go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. You said all the millennials, you know, they're, you know, doing reality shifting, quantum jumping, timeline shifting. Um, we're all doing it. You, you know, I've heard you say sometimes several times in a day. I know several times in a day, uh, my reality is shifting and we can feel it physically. There's that yeah. sensation of when it happens. You guys, if you haven't started doing this yet, please look up Cynthia and realityshifters.com because it's cool. I mean, you really, the experience of it is amazing. And like we're both saying, it's so available now, but we're all doing it. So you're shifting five times in a day to timelines that I'm not shifting in and I'm doing the same and a billion other people are shifting theirs. Are we messing things up by all being in different timelines? And are we, we're obviously not moving as a collective and yet we are. What's that about Cynthia? Well, this gets into quantum logic, you know, because we tend to think we, we have very uh, flatland brains. We're happiest on like a flatland world where it's just the topography that we can look at on a map, you know, and that we can grasp. That we, it's, it's a little bit mind boggling to get into these higher levels of dimensional reality where um, where these miracles occur, these reality shifts, these quantum jumps, uh, epic changes occur, and it's mysterious. So um, it's, it's, it's just a huge um, leap to, to recognize, first of all, this is happening. A lot of people are experiencing it. So what's it about? It's, I think, I think when we recognize like, okay, we're making these jumps, we're not messing things up because the jumps are happening anyway. It's completely 100% natural. It's how nature works. It's everything to do with the, the natural world. I know that because we see it in photosynthesis, like I describe in my book, Quantum Jumps, that uh, it's ridiculously unlikely how amazingly efficient it is. It's off the hook efficient, much more than any of our solar technologies currently are. And what they're doing, what these plants are doing with photosynthesis is doing quantum random walks. So they're able to quickly just solve the puzzle instantly. Wow. Um, so what we're looking at with all these different, we're not messing things up, but we are exploring the fullness of our quantum identity. As we get this extra energy through this phase in time that we're living through this great awakening, this move uh, from you know, the Hopi talk about the fourth world and we're moving into the fifth, and it's a leveling up, it's an energizing that's, that's happening associated with that. And as we do that, we're getting to see, like maybe you see lots of possible friends, lots of possible family members. You're starting to see all, many of their personalities and identities and possible worlds. You're getting glimpses into that as well as your own. And the quantum logic part of it is basically saying instead of just either or black and white true or false we're getting into this realm of um, all sorts of shades of gray of fourfold logic where we've got true and false and not true not false we're starting to see the possibility that we can play in the imaginal realm and recognize these could be real and there's a realer reality than any of the physical forms that we dance through you know, that's just a, that's like skipping through stones down a, 
on a trail. It's um, you know crossing a if we're crossing a river stone by stone and you're quantum jumping, then you might notice some of these stones look different. It's like that one's different. Now the whole river is different. And that's okay. It's part of the journey. Um, it's kind of like we're crossing, but each step along the way feels completely different. And the people that we're with are feeling different. But we can feel that on the core reality, like who they are to the core of their being, their infinite eternal selves, that's still there. And we can feel those connections are the realest reality. And that's my experience of what that feels like. So I feel like this is the time of this great awakening. We are seeing a much greater possibility range. It can seem scary, perhaps, to people who've, who have a hard time believing this is possible because they've come to think that it's the assumption of one objective reality is true. I know that's not true. And I think a lot we're getting a lot increasing evidence to show that's not true. So... Yeah. And I think probably everyone, if they thought about it, it probably, it, well, it, clearly it's happened to everyone. But if you think, if you think it hasn't, think back to a time in your life where something happened that you cannot explain. Something was on your dresser table. You know, you left it there. There's no one else in the house. And now it's missing. And three months later, it shows back up again. Like a lot of those, I think we just think we lost our mind for a minute. But those are our likely reality jumps, shifts, timeline changes. So Cynthia, if somebody doesn't know about this and doesn't think it happened to them or but wants to know, what do you say is, there, is the first step? What's the first thing a person should do if they kind of want to explore this? Well, keep it safe by asking how good can it get? I'm a big believer in big safe one. journeys, <laughs> safe, good <laughs> travels, <laughs> because this can be mind blowing. Yeah. And that way, when the stuff starts happening, you're like, oh my gosh, this happened. Like, yeah, but was it good? It's like, it was good, but freaky. It's like, okay, let's hold on to the good part. <laughs> it's like, like, I know for sure I checked everywhere. And like you said, the, the item was not there and then it suddenly reappeared, but you got it back. Yeah, but that's impossible. You know, so it, it's very freaky when it happens to you. Um, when it happens to other people or for, for the new experiencers, it's easy to just sort of ignore that or maybe that person's getting all worked up over nothing, you know. <laughs> and then it happens to that to you personally and it's a whole different thing. And yeah, that's where these things can be really mind boggling. You know, I, um, I just had a thought that, you know how nobody seems to agree on anything right now on the planet. And before, if you think back 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and I mean, all of time, we sort of all agreed on right. at least what time it is. We don't agree on that anymore. Right. You know, people are talking about the changes in calendar and time and clocks and everything. We agreed in general how we were going to behave and live and you know, there was like a collective agreement. There is very little collective agreement right now. I mean, we were talking earlier, there are people who believe in a flat earth or people that believe in a round earth. And you were talking about other dimensions altogether. We are not in agreement. And I was thinking that was a bad thing. I was thinking that, um, you know, some people just seem nuts, seem crazy these days. And it just occurred to me, it's not a bad thing at all. It's a way to break apart those old paradigms and free everybody to go on these quantum journeys. The one that fits their highest self the best in that moment. So I think my advice would be to a person, if you don't like what's going on in your life, notice how you're feeling and how what's going on in your life is a match to that and find a way to change how you're feeling. We have a way to do it with cognitive movement. You have a way to do it. There's many, many ways to do it. Yes. And then notice what changes. You know, add on that, how good can it get? And now you really are on to something. Yeah, the self-awareness is totally the key. And this is where meditation can be helpful to recognize that you are not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. Sometimes people really feel like they're locked into that. But yeah, you're, not, you're free. And that beginner's mind that, that, ability to let go of the beliefs that that bog us down that's the key and I think maybe you're right there's a I like to look at for a gift in every challenge and so the gift 
in the challenge of these disagreeing worldviews. These all these reality bubbles are so different. We yeah. talked with we talked with the author Roger Marsh on our International Mandela Effect conference, and he talked about truth bubbles. And each person really has their own truth. And before that idea would have sounded like kind of like, what are you talking about, Roger? But now good heavens it's like we're living in it so it, yeah is, <laughs> but the, the it's like a gift because then we get this opportunity we can actually like you said check how you feel i love that so much, i'm so into that too and really start listening to all levels of yourself often people they don't want to look that deep because they might find something scary in how they feel but mm -hmm. we need to be our own best friends right now and there is there's always a gift there's like even if you find um this barn and it's just full of manure the the, the optimist says there's got to be a pony in there somewhere and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key it's like okay where is the gift and it doesn't matter how bad the mess looks and how bad the feelings may feel they may feel overwhelming oh, but, yeah. but we know yeah you know it i know it but it's we it's something that we can all deal with and it's it's not an escape in a, uh, <laughs> not unavoidable it's not inescapable we can always rise above it and together, of course, well, we're stronger than just individually. You're so right. I think for so long, we believed that what we think and how we feel is who we are. And that can be, it looks like that for sure. And that is the way our life sort of plays out because we're projecting it. If you can change how you feel, your thoughts go right along with it and everything can change. So I really think for people, if you're willing to get rid of your biggest resentment, I mean, for real, let it go, give it back, send it back before it came, whatever you have to do, you can start to see your life change from there. So, well, I would say, and the first thing I did was I read Cynthia Sue Larson's books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's the first, no, I'm not kidding. That, that is one of the things that helped me explain my crazy life of things disappearing and reappearing. So I would recommend that to absolutely anyone. Uh, reality shifters is the first one, right? Is that reality shifts? Yes. Reality shifts. When consciousness changes the physical world, because it totally does. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's eye opening. So, you know, if you guys are listening to this and if you've gotten this far, you're probably into it. So read the books if you haven't, because it really does open your eyes. I think that's one of the other things. When you're aware that's what's happening, right? You can not only do it on purpose, but you can enjoy it. You really can have so much fun. It's, that's the fun of being back in yeah. beginner's mind because it's like being a kid again. You get yeah. that, that, that all things are possible mentality back that we think erroneously we have to trade in and give up as we grow up. We yeah. don't. You can totally regain beginner's mind. Well, in the beginning, well, not in the beginning because I think it's about my whole life, but I used to look at things and think, how did that get there? How did that happen? What even is that? <laughs> I've had that moment many times. Like, what actually is that? <laughs> I love and, it. And it was so confusing and, and quite upsetting, actually. And now I'll have that same experience, but now on steroids. And now I just go, mm, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I did, <laughs> right? So it's, it becomes really, really fun and life changes and possibilities are available that you just never dreamed were available. So I highly recommend it. Well, thanks again, Cynthia, for Gosh. a fantastic conversation. It is always the best to get to talk to you. I love talking with you too. And, and people love hearing these conversations. So that's fun. <laughs> <Do you think? laughs> I think I, it's making a big difference. I, I'm getting, I'm seeing lots of comments from people saying that they just love having these conversations because maybe they don't have a friend to yeah. talk to like this and then they can just grab their coffee and hang out with us so. it's true in fact so truth be known this is a little quantum jump for me this morning because so i was I, I was telling you all the weird things that were going on in my head this morning and i you know uh heard you say you know ask the question that you want uh that you want the answer to yes so one of the first things was, is what is the funnest thing that could happen today? And Cynthia is really busy and yes. I'm really busy. And usually it takes us weeks to talk, but I thought I'll reach out to Cynthia today. I had a few things to share with her and 
she had a free opening and I had a free opening and it was exactly the same time. And that's like unheard of. Unheard of. I think that's worth mentioning here. You're right. My schedule is ridiculously full. So the fact that that happened is, it's it's like a miracle basically. Well, I asked what's the (laughs) funnest thing that could happen for me today. And the funnest thing ever is to talk to Cynthia Sue Larson. So oh, thank you. Woo, it happened. Woo, I'm happy too. <laughs> Made my Hi. day just too. <laughs> so we'll have to do this again very soon. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you for everybody for listening to us chatter on about strange things. But and leave comments, you know, in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we love other insights, questions, and we'll probably meet up again. Yeah. Actually, so what's the best way for people to reach you? Well, that's email, but that's through my website, realityshifters.com. And that's definitely the best way. Yeah, for me, info at cognomovement.com. Mm-hmm. So we love these conversations. So if you do a uh, comment below, we can get in there and actually yeah. have some conversations. We'll check back when we're not too busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, my love friend. Love you so much. Love Thank everybody. you so much. Love you too. <laughs>